Oops. Quick return. Half an hour break. Back to mathematics. Another live stream. So yes, a nice conversation on the last live stream, which we finished about half an hour ago, so we're back on it again. Uh, another just open discussion, math-centric, I guess, live stream uh, for those that need a little math help towards the end of the year, school year. Um, if there's any questions and stuff, there's some qu interesting questions that came on last uh, on the last stream, just some randoms just brain teasers and a couple of uh, calm rhetorics questions uh, and thank you for I forget who it was that was asking the questions it was fantastic there's a couple of people that were replying answering the questions really fast um, which was fantastic and we ended up doing them on the board here and this is the view that we're using to do the, the problems if there's any questions that are coming up okay so we'll just keep this going um, and i'll be here again tomorrow uh, for anyone that uh, requires any math help if you want to run some stuff past me as long as i can do them there's one question that stopped me on the last stream i forget what it was it was what was it uh, I forget what it was and one of them was a visual one which was fantastic you know if a pond if the lilies in a pond double every day and it takes 48 days to fill the pond how many days does it take to for the pond to be half full of lilies right and the answer is one day less than it takes for it to be a full pond of lilies right We'll just chill. I could do a lesson. Uh, some of the stuff I've been reviewing with some of my students, but we'll leave that be for now until we get people popping in. Drink some tea. Casey was here on the last stream and you need to take a break. Uh, taking a tea break if you're feeling low. The weather is weird right now. It warms up, cools down. so. I know some people that are having a hard time with that allergies kicking in and they're getting a little bit of aches and pains with the weather adjustment. We're like, it's like metal, right? Our bodies, when it gets cold with metal, it shrinks a little bit. When it gets hot, it expands a little bit. I think our bodies do the same thing. No pop-ups showing up. No. I'm pretty sure we did a binomial. Let me check this out. Because I was just working with a student yesterday. We're doing our last couple of days. We're doing some binomial uh, distribution. I don't know if we did that on a stream, previous stream or not. Quadratic functions, Ferris wheel. I don't think we did binomial distribution. Rational functions, graphing, nope. No, we didn't do it. Maybe we'll do a binomial. Because it's, uh, it's a fun thing to do with the binomial distribution because combinatorial permutations came up. A couple of combinatorial permutations, factorials in the last stream. So let's do, uh, you know, while we're waiting for people, let me just do a binomial distribution. Uh, Make sure we get the formula. Well, I know I know the formula. Or Pascal's triangle. That's what I want. Pascal's triangle. It's binomial as well, but Pascal's triangle, that's what we want. Nice. Here, let's do Pascal's triangle. Okay, let me put this down. And let me change the change the screen. And we'll talk about, we'll formalize Pascal's, just so you know, we'll formalize Pascal's triangle at some point when we get into probability and statistics. Because uh, Pascal's triangle goes into a lot of different things. 
but let's do this Oop. so one thing we have in mathematics is we expand foil out different types of binomials right so for example if we have this x plus y right let's say let's do let's take it down from the beginning right x plus y x plus y to the power of zero we'll do x plus y to the power of one we'll do x plus y to the power of two we'll do x plus y to the power of three and we'll do x plus dot 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 x plus y to the power of seven okay now let me make sure this is working out okay yeah that's working out okay so take a look at this let's see we had a binomial expression a binomial is just basically two terms right so we want x plus y to the power of zero anything to the power of zero is one so this one is just easy one okay we want x plus y to the power of one now anything to the power of one is itself so this just becomes x plus y okay and then we want to expand x plus y to the power of two now x plus y to the power of two squared means whatever is in there whatever is being squared times itself right so this is going to be x plus y times x plus y and then we foil this out we've talked a lot about this right so this becomes x squared plus xy plus xy plus y squared and that simplifies down to x squared plus 2xy plus y squared okay so i'm just going to write that whole thing there we don't need the work so that becomes x squared plus 2xy plus y squared okay let's say we want to expand this now let me erase this one that's to the power of seven we're going to do right so this thing says x plus y times x plus y times x plus y now the way we have to do this is we've got to do two of them and then combine like terms and then connect that up with the third one right so we expand this guy and if we expand this guy that's what we end up getting right so this becomes x squared plus 2xy oops plus y squared plus y squared times x plus y okay now what we're going to do is we're going to expand this this times this this times this and this times this and so on and so forth okay so this becomes i'm going to move it over here because we're going to need the space so x squared times x is x cubed x squared times xy is plus x squared y 2x times x is going to be plus 2x squared 2x oops forgot the y part 2xy times x is 2x squared y 2xy times y is plus 2xy squared y squared times x is plus xy squared y squared times y is plus y cubed and then we're going to combine our like terms so we have x squared and x squared x squared y and x squared y these guys combine and we've got xy squared and xy squared this guy and this guy combined so this becomes x cubed plus 3x squared y plus 3xy squared plus y cubed okay that is this guy expanded now take a look at the amount of work required to go from here to here that was ridiculously easy this was just writing this out this was foiling that out it was fairly quick right this guy took us much longer because the first part of it was us expanding this here but then we had to multiply by this guy so it takes a lot of effort to get to that point right now just imagine trying to do this for let's make sure this fits on the board here x plus y to the power of seven right the amount of work required to do this is going to be huge right but in mathematics this is just a pattern of things in mathematics what happens is 
we've taken a look at these things and we've come up with uh, sort of shortcuts, simpler way to do these things. All right. And that's what we're going to talk about right now. Now, just imagine if we wanted to expand this and let's before we get into this, let's see what the pattern is here. OK, so that's going to be three X X cubed plus three X squared Y Y blah, 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 blah. So I'm going to copy this here. Let me just erase this. OK, that's the expansion here is X plus Y cubed is going to be x cubed plus 3x squared y plus 3xy squared plus y squared, y cubed. Okay, which is, should be what we have here, right? Okay, we'll keep this down here, we'll expand that. Now, looking at this and looking at more expressions, more expansions of these, binomial expansion yes binomial expansion we, if we look at this and we continue this let's assume we've continued this to x to the power 4 x to the power 5 so on and so forth what we end up getting is this the binomial expansion does this let's see if this is going to be in red do we want red let's see blue let's see how this blue is going to come up we write the one here okay oh this is going to be hard to erase but that's okay over here, we're going to assume there is a one in front here and a one in front here. So we're going to expand this one, one. In front of any variable that doesn't have a number is a one. Okay, so there's a one here and a one here. So right now, all, all, we'll, all we're looking at is the coefficient in front of the variable. So there's a one there, there's three there, three there, and a one there, right? And a two here, right? So we have one, one, one. 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, All right? There should be a pattern there that you're seeing. And the way this works is this. The ends are ones just going down like this. And these numbers here are these two numbers added up. So whatever number you're putting here, you're adding up the two number that is flanked by. So that's a, 1 plus 2 is 3. 2 plus 3 is 3. Okay. That's one pattern we're going to look at for the binomial. The other pattern we're going to see is this. This is x and that's y, right? Now that's x to the power of 1, y to the power of 1. Okay. Same here, same here, same there, right? Now, what you're going to notice is this. If that's to the power of 1, it's just whatever they were. If that's to the power of 2, what happens is the power of 2 is here on the first one. And then for this, it's the power of 1. And then for this guy, the y, we start off with the power of 1. And we're ending up y to the power of 2. Over here is to the power of 3, right? We're expanding a binomial to the power of three the first variable gets to the power of three the last variable is to the power of three in the middle what happens is the first variables power decreases by one increment at a time so that that's x to the power of three x to the power of two x to the power of one and x to the power of zero but x to the power of zero is just one so we don't expand we don't bother writing it down right and over here, the y, we have y to the power of 3, y to the power of 2, y. And over here, we really have y to the power of 0. So there's another pattern for the variables, for the terms here in the binomial expansion. Okay, and that's something we're going to use as well. We're also going to keep a note on this. And I'm going to lay all this out in one thing. We're going to erase this and we're going to lay it all out, right? Here's the other thing you're going to... You're going to notice the first one here is to the power of zero okay this is the guy the second row here is to the power of one the third row here is to the power of three the fourth row here is sorry the third row here is to the power of two the fourth row here is to the power of three okay 
Here's another pattern embedded within the binomial distribution of the binomial Pascal's triangle, right? Is this is to the power of three. Power of three has one, two, three, four terms when it's expanded. One, two, three, four. Power of two is going to have three terms. Power of one is going to have two terms. Power of zero is going to have one term. Okay. So the way it works is whatever the power is here, okay, you're going to have one extra term than what the power is. Okay. Since that's the case, what we're going to do, we're going to call this position zero, position one, position two, position three. Okay, it's just terminology, the way we're going to express it. And that comes out in the combinatorics aspect of things. Okay, so knowing this pattern, I'm going to erase all this. And we're going to just going to generate Pascal's triangle and relate that to the binomial theorem and expand x plus y to the power of seven. Okay, and then we're going to do a little bit more complicated as well. Yeah, you get the coefficients for Pascal. I'm just going to read a couple of comments that were posted. Does this link to Pascal's triangle? This is Pascal's triangle for sure. Pascal's triangle and the binomial theorem, binomial expansion, and commutatorics permutation. Well, not permutations, but commutatorics. They they're all linked together, right? So let's erase this. Okay. Let's create Pascal's triangle. Pascal's triangle does this. Start off with one, and then I'm gonna write this tight so we can get a fair bit of nice expansion, right? One, 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 two, one, one, three, three, one. Let's generate the next one. The end here is one. One plus three is four. Three plus three is six, four, one. And you can see the symmetry down the middle from this side to that side, right? And then one again. This is five. One plus four is five. Four plus six is ten. And again, ten, five, one. Expand again. One, six. Five plus one is six. Five plus ten is fifteen. Ten plus ten is twenty. And again, it repeats fifteen, six, and one. This is one, seven. One plus six is seven. 6 plus 15 is 21, 15 plus 20 is 35, 15 plus 20 again, 35, 21, 7, 1. So that's to the power of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's to the power of 7. That's what we wanted to expand, right? So let's expand this. We had x plus y to the power of 7. Now, if we want to expand this, the numbers in front here were just the coefficients, right? So if this is to the power of seven, how many terms are we gonna have in the expansion? We're gonna have eight terms in the expansion, right? Let's check it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? So these numbers are the coefficients, the numbers in front of this expansion. So I'm gonna write those down for now. So we got one, I'm gonna leave space for the letters, one plus seven plus 21. I'm gonna go down this way, right? Plus 35 plus 35 plus 21 plus seven plus one. Okay. What we also saw is we start off with the first variable here, first position here, and that's to the power of seven. So this is gonna be x to the power of seven. The second guy here, the y, is to the power of zero, right? But we're not gonna, well, let's write it down. y to the power of zero. Hopefully this is coming up big enough. It is, it's pretty small. Is one, I'm just gonna read a couple more comments. Is, um, here, let's change the look here. Let me read these comments. Is one plus 
nx plus n da 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 effectively Pascal's triangle of the next we're gonna we're gonna talk about that we'll we're gonna take this and then we're gonna do the binomial expansion so we'll cover that but to answer um, let me make sure you got all correct I believe so uh, but we'll do it we can check it with what you wrote down yeah the coefficients of are the numbers in the nth row of the triangle cool that's without using C I take it yeah or the end with the row yeah perfect so everything's being taken care of thanks racer racer kill answering the questions okay so take a look at this so these are the coefficients now we're putting in the variables right so what's going to happen is this one here is going to have an x and a y as well x y and the way it works is the power to the first one is going to be decreasing one at a time and the power for the second one is going to be increasing one at a time remember this position was zero one two three four five six seven right that's where the zero comes in here and this zero plays out when we write it in terms of we're just jumping ahead a bit a little bit we'll explain this this zero comes in seven to the power of zero that's what we're starting with here to answer uh collins's question right so we're go i'm going to put an x and a y for all of these for now and then we're going to put the powers on okay x y x y x y so the x starts off with power seven and then it decreases one at a time so this is power of six power of five power of four power of three power of two power of one power of zero which is really one we don't have to write it but i'm doing just to be consistent and then the y is increasing one at a time so it starts off with zero one two three four five six seven we just expanded x plus y to the power of seven using pascal's triangle and pattern recognition in a fraction of the time that it took to expand something to the power of three remember the, these guys are mm, let's write these down here this is power power of zero one two three four five six seven right we did this expansion for power of seven in let's say about the same time a little bit less than what it took to do this and to do this by expanding and multiplying all together it would have taken an exponentially longer time right but we were able to do it by pattern recognition now because there is a pattern here we can formalize it right we can take this thing and say okay we don't want to generate a pascal's triangle what if we wanted to expand something that was more complicated than this but let's just say it was this to the power of 21 right now we're not going to draw pascal's triangle into 21 rows or 22 rows right because that's row one that's row eight but it's power of seven right we're not going to draw pascal's triangle at large what if this was 210 wow it would be huge right so we need to apply some kind of formula to this whole thing and the formula is this okay and it, you can use it to expand any binomial to a certain power okay the formula for each term there's one term two terms three terms four terms five terms six terms seven terms eight terms corresponding to this 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 and we start out with a count of zero right so for this one right this expansion oh yeah one other thing i should mention with this as well the powers on the terms here add up to seven seven plus zero is seven six plus one is seven five plus two is seven four plus three is seven three plus four is seven two plus five is seven one plus six is seven zero plus seven is seven right so there's a lot of pattern embedded here for each term here this is the formula we're going to use and if i remember correctly is going to be c 
the power we're going to call n. So let me write this in general term. Let's say we wanted to expand this. x plus y to the power of n. For this, if you're going to go to any specific term, right, and let's call these guys the position here k. Oh, I'm not going to put it there because I don't want to confuse it with the power, right? We're going to call these guys k's. Okay, these guys here, and this is position zero. That's <laughs> too messy. Let's erase that. Let's make it neater. K zero. Okay, so this is the expansion you have. Combitorix choose n. This is position zero, so we're going to call this k. I believe it's minus one. If we want the first position, then it's 1 minus 1 is 0, right? And then we're going to have the first term and the second term in there, x and y. And the power on the first term is going to be n times k minus 1. And the power on the second term is going to be k minus 1. Okay. I wrote this too tight. I can't fit it all in. Yeah, let me erase this a little bit more. Yeah, let's move this over a little bit. That's going to be n times k minus 1, and that's y to the power of k minus 1. If I have that correct. Uh, da -da. Oops. My bad. That's not n minus k. It's n minus k. Jeez. Almost messed that one up, right? So before we continue on this, I'm just going to read some comments just to make sure we're on the right track. I didn't mess up any of the formulas here, right? So let me change the view again. What do we got? What do we got? Comments, yes, yes. Do you have Do you have every degree in math? No, I don't have. Uh, I just have, like for me, I... I have my degree in geophysics and a minor in mathematics. Uh, I don't consider myself to be a mathematician. I just learn mathematics to a level that I can use it in my life. That's it. Okay. And it didn't, uh, I guess it took some effort. Learning is not supposed to be easy. If it was, it'd just be doing, it wouldn't be learning. It took a little bit of effort, but uh, thanks to all the questions that my students were giving me, I was directed down the right path because I was trying to seek out the answers to the questions that they had. So I learned in the process, right? Uh, and I really didn't learn mathematics until I started teaching mathematics. I just, I was a monkey doing what monkey saw a monkey does, right? I just learned certain things and I used those things in my life, but I really didn't have an understanding how everything expanded uh, to include mathematics, okay? I believe it's just combinations. Yeah, it is combinations. Yeah, the coefficients are also equal to n choose k. K, yeah, I'm using k. It's n choose k, but I'm using k minus 1 because I want it to correspond with the position of where they are in the expansion. I believe that's the... Uh, I don't 100% sure if that's the right terminology for it, but da -da 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 -da. I think x should be to the power of n minus 1 and y should be to the become 2 hmm. n sum k k over k from 0 to n yeah it depends where you start the count right if you say k the count uh, it starts off at 0 then you don't need the negative 1 minus 1 I should maybe type this out, see what the correct terminology is for it. Um, where is the formula? Where is the formula? Oh, they do do it that way. Let's check it out. Okay. Okay, so let's do it this way. So since that's the case, then we're going to do it this way as well. 
yeah we'll follow the convention i guess so let's do it this way so let's do this let's call this k and that's k and we're gonna call this k okay Oops. that's a whack okay okay and the k is the count right i should have actually used it from the beginning because i said k is equal to this right so the first position is going to be zero here if we want the first term okay so let's use this expansion actually let's use this expansion to find the middle term right off the bat right so let's assume for this expansion here that we have okay what if i wanted you to find the fifth term in this expansion and that's sort of a question that does come up at tests that they ask you or they ask you to find the middle term and because power of seven has eight terms in it there is no middle term right an even power will have a middle term because an even power has one more than the power says one more term than the power says right which makes it odd so there is a middle term so the power of six has one two three four five six seven terms so the middle term would be 20 and an odd power has eight terms so there is no middle term the middle term would be between these two guys right so let's say i wanted you to find the fifth term in this expansion right so what you would do you would go okay the fifth term power of seven has eight terms in it right so the fifth term would be k equals zero k equals one two three four so whatever term you're looking for this number here is one less than what the term is you're looking for so if that's the case let me see are we showing up here yeah we're going to show here so if i want the fifth term this is what i'm going to write um i don't want to erase all that i'm going to take this formula and put it up here okay so that's going to be c and choose k right and then we're going to call it x for now x n minus k and y to the power of k okay hopefully that shows up okay yeah that's not bad okay so that's for any specific term we're looking for right so if i want the fifth term the fifth term is the k value of four one two three four five this is the fifth term k value is one less the term you're looking for so the k value is four right so this is going to be c and it's to the power of seven seven choose four okay and it's going to be x to the power of seven minus four as per our formula and y to the power of k which is going to be four so seven choose four is seven factorial over seven minus four factorial times or divided by four factorial this is going to be x to the power of three y to the power of four right and the fifth term we already have the expansion here one two three four five so this is the term we're trying to get out we have the variables to the right power now we just have to figure out if this guy is 35 right and the way we do that is 7 factorial is 7 times 6 times 5 dot 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 over 7 minus 4 factorial is 3 factorial and 4 factorial well let me write this out properly or the expanded version right 3 times 2 times 1 and four factorials four times three times two da, da, da. now four three two one kills four three two one past here three times two is six right and six kills six so seven times five is 35 right that is the same as that and instead of expanding it manually right which was a lot faster than expanding it by foiling stuff out right we use the formula to find the fifth term which was faster finding specific terms pinpointing things right 
Knowing all of this now, we're going to use the formula. We're going to erase Pascal's triangle, and we're going to stick with the formula. It takes up less space, and we're going to make this a little bit compli more complicated, binomial expansion, and we're going to see how things play out for this, right? So let me erase all this, okay? Now keep this in mind. I'm going to erase this part, okay? Actually, maybe we'll keep Pascal's triangle up for now, okay? Keep this in mind. That's super powerful. And I'm going to write this down here so we see this, okay? Better. C, n choose k, okay? x to the power of n minus k and y to the power of k. Okay, let's erase this guy so it's bigger so we see everything. And before we do a more complicated one, I'm just going to read some more comments just to make sure there's no additional questions related to this or any corrections in the way I've written things down. Okay. And choose k is most often written like n over k inside parentheses, but it's common also. Yeah, the one comment is being made. This, okay, and choose k, one of the ways that is written common in certain parts of the world is nk. When they write it like this, that's the same thing as this. Um, I usually write it like this. I don't usually write it like that, but that's one of the conventions that they use because that's referring to combinations. I don't know if there's... Because you have another version of expansion where if you're doing com permutations, combinations, is order doesn't matter here, but order matters here. I don't know if there's another way of writing this for the P because you can't write N, K, for this as well, because this means something else. The expansion here, obviously it's not that, is n factorial over n minus k factorial, but this one means n factorial over n minus k factorial and k factorial. So the difference between this and this is in the bottom of this one, there's also a k factorial, in the bottom of this one, there is no k factorial. and the difference between them is for this one order doesn't matter no matter let's write down no matter this one order matters okay so if order matters if you're dividing by one less term then you're gonna have a bigger number right so there's more combination if order matters if you can tell the difference between the different objects right if you're ordering 10 chairs right and all the chairs look the same then order doesn't matter if all the chairs are different right different color different size then where you place the chairs matters because you can distinguish between those objects right and that's something that comes up in permutations and combinations which kicks off into probability statistics and stuff like this so let me erase this guy. And this means this, okay? When we're expanding in the previous live stream that we did earlier this morning, we talked about this. This means this, okay? So we're gonna keep that in mind as well. So let's assume we had a binomial which was more complicated than x plus y. Let's say we had this. Where should we write this? Let's write this here. Let's say we had 3x squared y minus 5xy cubed to the power of 8, right? Wow, 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 way more complicated. Now remember, when we expanded this thing, the x and the y were basically your first term and your second term, right? So I don't know if they use x and y in the expansions. What do they use, a's and b's or something? What did they use? I don't even know. P, P minus. Oh, that's probability. Uh, that's the thing that they're using. So we can call it anything we want, really. But I'm, I'm just going to leave them as X, Y. But 
just know x means the first term and y means the second term and if we want to clear this up maybe we'll do it this way we'll call it a and b all right a b a means this and b means this right and always remember the sign in front of the number goes with the number right so this isn't 5xy cubed this is negative 5xy cubed right just for example if i had a negative number here this is positive let's make it a negative right so what if for this i wanted you to find the middle term right this is an even power so there's going to be nine terms in the expansion right so let's find the middle number here so what would the middle number be right if there's nine terms here let me put these pens down for a second if there's nine terms in the expansion right so one two three four five six seven eight nine the middle term is the fifth fifth term right and what does the fifth term mean the fifth term has a k value of four right because the k value here is one less than the term right so let's assume we want to find the fifth term which gives it a k value of four again right so the way this expansion will work is this this is going to be eight the power right n refers to the power eight choose four right and then we're going to take this guy which is negative three x squared y and it's going to go to the power of n minus k which is eight minus four so it's going to be eight minus four right and then the second term the b term is going to be negative 5xy cubed negative 5xy cubed to the power of k which is 4. interesting cool difficult possibly but let's do it again okay this 8 choose 4 is going to be 8 factorial over 8 minus 4 factorial times 4 factorial on the bottom this guy is going to be negative 3 x squared y to the power of 8 minus 4 is 4 and this guy is just going to be negative 5 x y cubed to the power of 4 okay now if we're going to expand this 8 factorial is I should leave myself way more room i'm going to erase this again and put it up here okay so let's do actually let's do this part here okay eight factorial means eight times seven times six times five times four dot 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 divided by eight minus four factorial is four times three times two dot 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 four factorial is four times three times two dot 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 so four three two one kills 4 3 2 1 here 8 4 times 2 is 8 right so that kills that 3 goes into 6 twice right so in the top we have 7 times 5 is 35 times 2 is 70 okay so can you see this far down oh I didn't change the view my bad jeez Luis I think the camera is wrong. It is wrong. I should have checked on that. Check the screen. So let me do this part again. My bad. So this one was going to be 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, dot, 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 over 8 minus 4, right? Yeah, we got the right view. 8 minus 4 is 4 factorial. This one, 4 factorial. So 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, dot. And 4 factor is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 4 times 3 times 2, 1 kills this. 4 times 2 is 8, takes out 8. 3 takes 6 down to 2. 7 times 5 is 35 times 2 is 70, right? So this is 70. Okay. And if we look at this expansion, we took this to 7. 
And if we look at the expansion for 8, there's going to be 1 here. This is going to be 8. That's going to be 28. Add those guys up is going to be 6, 56. And add those guys up is 70. That's what we're finding right there. Those two guys added up, right? So we have this for part. That's 70. Now what we got is we got to expand this guy. So let me expand this guy. So we have the 70. Let's erase this. So we know this guy. That's 70. I'm going to write this down here. 70 times this. That's going to be negative 3. Doop, negative 3 x squared y to the power of 4. That means negative 3 is to the power of 4, x squared is to the power of 4, and y is to the power of 4. So negative 3 to the power of 4 is negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3, which is going to be 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 3 is 9, 9 times 9 is 81, and it's even number of negatives, so it's positive. So that's going to be 81. x squared to the power of 4 is x to the power of 8, y to the power of, to the power of 1 to the power of 4 is y to the power of 4. So this guy is going to be, this guy becomes 81 x to the power of 8, y to the power of 4. Now let's expand this guy. That's negative 5, negative 5 x, y cubed to the power of 4. Okay, negative 5. So negative 5 to the power of 4 is 4, 5 multiplies together. 5 times 5 is 25. You can do it, multiply by 5 is 125. 125 times 5 is 625. Okay, or you could go 5, 5, 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times 5 is 25. 25 times 25 is 625. Should be anyway. Okay, so this guy becomes 625. That becomes x to the power of 4 and y to the power of 12. Okay. So this guy expands to 625, x to the power of 4, y to the power of 12. Okay. So what does this give us? I'm going to erase this. Now, I'm not going to multiply the numbers together. You can do that on your own, right? But it's 70 times 81 times 625. Actually, let's do it with the calculator. Let's do this. If anybody wants to, they can do. But let's go 70 times 81 times 625. 3,000,000. 543, so 354, 3543, 750, okay. And the x's and y's combine you add the exponents, right? So x to the power of 8 times x to the power of 4 is going to be x to the power of 12. y to the power of 4 times y to the power of 12 is going to be y to the power of 16. So the middle term for this expansion is 3,543,750 x to the power of 12, y to the power of 16. Right? Just imagine having to expand this manually by hand eight times. That would be crazy. It would be huge. Right? A lot of work, a lot of work, a lot of work. Using this formula, Right, this formula right here, we can go to an exact term in an expansion, binomial expansion. Very powerful, very powerful. And what they end up doing is they give you these types of questions and they try to they try to get you to find certain terms. They could ask you to find a constant term in an expansion. Okay. So let's do one where they act ask you for a constant term. Okay, let me erase these guys. We'll keep Pascal's triangle up. Okay, let's erase these. 
and I'm going to have to give you a binomial where there will be a constant term popping up. So it would be something like this. Take a look. Let's assume it was 2x squared. Let's make sure we can get one with an expansion. Minus, with a constant term, minus 1 over x cubed. I think that should do it. Should. Um, if it doesn't, we'll change it up. <laughs> Let's try it out. Let's get it to the power of 6. Okay. Let me make sure there's no more comments. I'm going to read a couple more comments. If there is any. Let's check this out. Uh, most often. Cool. I think. Yeah, and that's the camera. Okay, cool. No comments or no questions. So let's expand this. Now, if we're doing this guy, one question they love asking when they're giving you guys Pascal's triangles, binomial theorem, expanding binomials and stuff like this. Sometimes if you're unlucky, you get a teacher saying they want you, they want you to prove that you understand how this binomial expansion works. They'll ask you to expand this whole thing, which isn't that difficult, right? Expanding this whole thing would be, again, the first term would be 6 choose 0, 2x squared to the power of 6, and negative, remember, 1 over x cubed to the power of 0, plus c choose 1. We kick it up. The k value goes up by 1, right? And then it would be 2x squared to the power of 5, which would be 6 minus 1 and negative 1 over x cubed to the power of 1 plus so on and so forth the way we laid it out but if they want the constant term this is what's going to happen if you notice here x squared is in the numerator and you got an x cubed in the denominator right so when they ask you for the constant term because you're multiplying things out your first term a and your second term b because we have x in the top and we got x in the bottom the x's will cancel each other out so when they ask for the constant term what they want you to find they want you to find the term where these x's kill each other right and there's no x's in the term it's just a number right so for you to be able to do this you're basically looking for the common denominator between these you want these to be the same power right so the common denominator between these is six right if x was to the power of six up top and x was to the power of six in the bottom then they would kill each other all you would be left with would be just a number right let me just read one more comment it's being held for review allow will post it to chat your mom <laughs> yeah we're gonna ban this guy. Okay, let me let me do a minor banning because we don't have any mods right now, right? So let me take those out. A little deviation. Ben. Oops. Let's grab this guy. How do you ban? going on okay we do manually Dunk. let's do another one. Oh, he's got two names how silly Apologies about the uh, troll action, right? Sorry, but I don't understand that. Can you give me a short introduction? Uh, to binomial stuff? Uh, we just did an, how long is it? We just did an hour intro to it, right? <laughs> so 
um, the stuff is there. We sort of built this up, right? But what we're going to do now is do the expansion for this, but just find the constant term. Okay, hopefully that's okay. Uh, the binomial expansion is, is pretty cool, actually. It's very powerful. Saves you a lot of time. Saves you a lot of time. And I'll check the chat uh, more often just to see if there's any more hordes of trolls or single trolls coming through. I think he's lost. Okay, thanks. So let's find the, the constant term for this, right? So this sometimes becomes trial and error. You can guess approximately where it is, right? That's x squared, that's x cubed. Common denominator is six. So if we can get this to a power of six and that to a power of six, then they'll kill each other. The only thing we're left with is the numbers, right? So let's just at random try something. This is the six power. So this is the expansion we're gonna get for the C value, right? Those are the coefficients in front, okay? So let's just, for random, try to find the, I'm not gonna to try to find the third term. Actually, let's try to find the third term. The third term would be the K value of zero, one, two, right? So let's try to find, yeah, let's do the third term first because it's not gonna work. It's not gonna be a constant term. So the third term is gonna be C. Let me write this over this way. So we have room. It's gonna be the power of six. If we want the third term, it's one less than the term number, the K value, right? So we're gonna put two, and then we're gonna go two X squared to the power of six minus two, which is four, and then negative one over x cubed to the power of two, right? This, we already know what it is. It's the third term, so we know that's gonna come out to 15 here, right? We can do it, just check it. It's six factorial over six minus, minus two factorial, oops, minus two factorial, and two factorial, right? Six minus two factorial is four factorial, right? Four factorial, this is six factorial, six times five times four times three, dot, dot, dot. Four factorial kills these guys. Two factorial is two, two goes into six. Three times three times five is 15. So we already know what this is, right? That's 15. This guy, two to the power of four, two, four, eight, 16. Is going to be 16 x squared to the power of 4 is x to the power of 8 times x cubed squared it's, it's a negative being squared so it's positive so in the bottom we're going to have 1 over x to the power of 6 right and if we simplify this right 15 times 16 what is that 15 times 16 15 times 16 is 240, okay? So this guy is 240, x to the power of eight times one over x to the power of six, and x to the power of six, these guys kill each other, right? So this reduces this down to two, okay? So the third term is 240 x squared okay that's not a constant term because we still have x's in there so we had one more we had x squared in the top right so we have to move along this thing because as we move along the binomial expansion in this direction the power on the a comes down the power on the b goes up so what i'm going to do i'm going to find not the third term, but the fourth term, okay? And hopefully that will be the constant term. If it's not, this thing doesn't have a constant term, okay? So what we're gonna do now is do this, but we're gonna go six, choose not this, we're looking for this, that's the fourth term. So we're gonna choose three, okay? And we should have sort of known that, right? Because this is n minus k, six minus three is gonna be three. Actually, it's not gonna work out. We're not gonna have a constant term. I pick something that doesn't work. I think so anyway. 
But this is going to be 2x squared to the power of 6 minus 3 is 3. And this one is going to be negative 1 over x cubed to the power of 3, right? The number, this number is 20, that guy. 2 cubed is 8. 8 times 20 is 160. So we took care of the coefficients. That's going to be x to the power of 6. That's going to be 1 over x to the power of 9. So this guy simplifies down to 160 times x cubed in the bottom. So we've already gone past the point of, if I did this correctly anyway, I hope so. If this was a 3 and that was a 2, it would work out, I believe. Right? So this expansion doesn't have a constant term because there's always going to be x's in there. Let's change these guys up. Let's make this a 3 and make that a 2. Okay? Just so for our satisfaction, 4, then it's not going to be that term. It's going to be one more, right? So if we do it that way, if that was... Where were we? Oh, I was going to change this to 3 and change that to 2. That will be 3. That will be 2. So that's to the power of 9, and that's to the power of 6. That doesn't work. If it's to the power of 2, no, it's still not going to work. I picked something that doesn't work. That's weird. Yeah, it doesn't work. Sorry. Okay. But basically what happens is you can do this, get expressions like this where the terms end up killing each other the simplest way to do it is just keep these as one right if we keep these as one then finding oh because i did this wrong this should have been six minus two that's the reason silly me six minus two is four and that would have been two and that was a two and a three two and a three that was an eight that was a six that didn't work oh no we did that already okay that didn't work out but if the simplest way to do this is if that was x to the power of one right and if we end up finding the fourth term this becomes three right and this becomes 3, and that becomes 3, because 6 minus 3 is 3. So this would be the third term, the, th the fourth term. This would be 20, right? Here, let's do this expansion for the this guy, right? Let's make sure we don't have any more common. Sorry, but I don't understand this. Da, da, da. Okay, well, it would work if you just switched. If you multiply everything by x to the 18, you can move it inside and get da -da -da -da. <laughs> Yeah, you could actually. Uh, but let's try this one out. Let's make it more simpler, right? So this would be 6 choose 3, right? So it would be 6 factorial over 6 minus 3 factorial, 3 factorial. So this is 3 factorial. 6 factorial, 6 times 5 times times 4 times 3 dot 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 that kills the factorial for the 3 3 factorial is 6 so 6 kills 6 5 times 4 is 20 so that's that guy right so that guy is 20 this guy becomes 8 right that guy becomes x to the power of 3 this guy becomes 1 over x to the power of 3 x to the power of 3 kills x to the power of 3 and 8 times 20 is 160 that's your constant term. So the constant term occurs is the fourth term in the expansion of this, which is to the power of six, right? So the fourth term is your constant term, which is 160. Sorry about mucking that up the first um, time get-go, right? The banning things throws me off a little bit when I'm banning people. I don't like banning people. It's weird to me, right? People don't behave. The trolls coming through. I guess they're having fun. Okay. Fun. Let me put on my glasses. Let's check this out. Da, 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 da. 
Wouldn't it work if you just switch, if you multiply everything by x to the power of 18, you can move it inside and get 2x to the power of 6 minus 1x that, or it would be 2x to the power of 5 minus 1 to the power of 6, if I remember, if I remember right. And it easier to see that there is no x to the power of 18 term, hence x is not a multiple of 5. Ah, okay, yeah, I, I, I should have prepared something. I, I was uh, thinking there might be questions. I wouldn't go down this route. I did one of these things, a couple of these things. I had some students that are taking convertorics, so we did some reviews with them. Uh, and they have a whole bunch of they, these types of questions there's a whole bunch of different ways they come at you because there's only so many times so many ways they can ask you the same question right so they try to mix things up and mixing things up mixes up chicho doing the mathematics so i make little mistakes here and there what i mean is the constant term of x squared six is the same as x to the power of 18 term of, is it? 2x to the power of 5 minus. But there has to be an x in the denominator. Let's see that. Race kill. I think next time I'll try to come up with a better example. Uh, I'll lay some stuff out. I should have a, actually a little booklet that. Um, I have examples written down, but I don't, I don't. I just, I like, uh, cause I teach uh, students from different schools and stuff like this. So each teacher teaches them differently. And there's a lot of bad teachers out there. Unfortunately, it's just a system the way it is, right? That one, two X to the power of five minus one to the power of six. Yeah x to the power of 18 let's check this out x to the power of 18 times 2x squared da, 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 equals oh does it okay come so you did the expansion uh, you did the thing on paper that's cool i like the speed that you do math in uh, eraser uh, you're very good at it you have a nice grasp of uh, the language of mathematics the syntax of the language which is fantastic which is fantastic. 1x to the power of 3 per factor. One x to the power of 3 per factor. I'll have to think about that. That's, I'm losing it on that one. I have to, for me, one thing with mathematics is I have to see it. I'm very visual with it. As you can tell, obviously, right? So I have to sit there and expand them, and all of a sudden I go, ah, it just makes sense to me, right? I think that's one reason my students like working with me because I don't assume anything. I always, sometimes the most simple things I have to work out just to say, oh, wow, okay, that works out that way. That works out that way. Um. Five. Yep, that's correct. X to the power of three times two x squared minus one over. Yep, that is correct. That works. Potential combinations are applied in real life. Reading math in the computer is really yeah for me too. Reading math in the computer is so difficult, so difficult. Uh, as for Sweetie's question, how are permutations and combinations applied in the real world? Whew. Um, in probability and statistics, in a big way right because if you're trying to find the probability of something you have to find out what all the possible outcomes of the situation are before you can figure out what the probability of a certain type of outcome for a situation is right permutations and combination comes in comes in playing a huge way when it comes to gaming and poker right like for example what's the probability of getting uh, two pairs in poker right so let me erase this and that's one thing in uh, for mathematics oh yeah makes so much uh, that's one thing in mathematics uh, 
its uh, probability and statistics came out of games of chance so let me change the angle here uh, just just to give you one quick example uh, for example what's the probability of getting a two pair in poker right so you have five cards in poker so one two three four five right and you want to pair these up right let's say you want a three and a three and a ten and a ten and you can get whatever you want here right it doesn't make a difference right now there's 52 cards in a deck of cards and there's 13 cards per suit and there's four suits right so if i'm doing this correctly i think um racer racer kill can correct me on this but the probability of getting two pair is this or the number of not the probability but uh, the probability would just be the number of combinations divided by the total number of outcomes in a poker game but the number of ways that you can make a pair in poker would be 13 choose two you're going to take 13 cards right and choose two and then from there you're going to because there's four cards per what do you call it number i guess like there's four threes there's four tens there's four jacks four choose two so for each one of the 13 cars from the suits that you chose chose you're going to choose two i think that's what it is 13 choose one four choose three or wait a second is that going to be oh man we just did this recently but we're doing so many poker stuff i totally forgot um what it ends up being or maybe is it this it's 13 choose one so from the 13 from 